Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab. I have a tutorial today that is a bit of a beginner one, but hopefully some people will find this useful. And we're going to be talking about bringing shadows from Cinema 4D and compositing them in After Effects. So let's roll. We have this scene right here with some nice flags. And let's say that we want to bring these into After Effects and put them on this wall. Let's go ahead and just render this out and we'll bring it in really quick. So quick render, we'll go ahead and import this and drop this into our scene. And it doesn't look like it's really placed in the scene very well because it doesn't have good shadows. One thing that you could try is to go to Effect Perspective Drop Shadow. And you can see that we already have a pretty huge problem. Whenever we move the distance of that shadow away, we get the edges cut off. And uh, that is not going to work for us. So we want a way to bring in the shadows, but to bring them in accurately. So what we're going to do is add a plane behind this guy. So we'll add a plane, go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. We'll make this thing pretty huge so that it covers up our whole scene. And we're just going to slide this behind our flag. And you can see that we have some really nice shadows on this plane. If we want the shadows to be a little bit farther away from the flag, we can just move the plane back and the shadows will be farther. One thing to show you really quick is I do have shadows enabled in our general tab. You can see we have shadow map uh, set to soft. And then if you go to the shadow, you can see that I upped the resolution to 750. By default, the shadow is at 250. And if we go ahead and do a render, you can see that the shadow is very soft and it's not very well defined. That's what the shadow map is for. If we increase that resolution to something pretty high, it'll add a little bit of render time, but you can see that we get a much crisper shadow, uh, maybe from a harsher light source like a sun or something like that. So that's the setup. And then what we need to do is go to our multi-pass settings and we are going to add shadow. So go ahead and find shadow in your drop down right here. Now let's go ahead and render this and I'm going to show you what happens quick. All right, let's go ahead and bring this in. And let's show you the flag. Now we have this background baked into it, this uh, plane back there. But we also have this shadow uh, PSD, which is going to help us. So we're going to go ahead and take that uh, shadow and we're going to drop it behind the flag. So you can't see it unless we turn the flag off. So this is obviously not going to work. What we need to do is go back into our scene and add one more component, and that is an object buffer on top of this flag. So I have all of the flag stuff in a null. Go ahead and right click, add a Cinema 4D tag, compositing, and go to your object buffer tab and enable buffer one. Then we're going to go to our render settings, and in our multi-pass, we're going to add a object buffer. And we're going to have the group ID to one, which corresponds with our buffer ID right here. And we're going to render again. All right, we'll jump over into After Effects, and this time we're going to import that object buffer. So if we click on that, you can see that it has the flag in white and everything else in black, which is exactly what we need. We're going to drop that on top of the flag, and then on the flag, we're going to change the track mat to Luma Mat. And you'll notice that something's not quite right. That's because we have to go to that shadow, and if we change that shadow to Multiply, now that shadow is going to be multiplied onto the background. And now we have our perfect shadows that are actually um, accurate in 3D space. And what we can now do is change the opacity of our shadow. So we have full control in After Effects to composite this guy any way we want to. And uh, it's really, really simple. So that is how to bring in shadows into After Effects. You just have to make sure that you have all of your elements as an object buffer so that you can cut them out. And then you need to make sure that you have a plane in the background which is catching the shadow. And then you need to make sure that you have your shadow path on, which you can then overlay onto the background using Multiply. So I hope that helps out some of you people who are just starting out in Cinema 40 and helps you kind of understand some of the multi-passes a little bit better and how powerful they are. Thanks for checking out the Pixel Lab, guys. We'll talk to you next time.